You ever wonder why software development always seems to be so expensive? I'm going to explain why. Let's finally talk tech in plain English. I'm here to tell you how to take control of your company's technology. Now we're going to do some math. Now don't shy away. I'm going to keep it extremely simple, but it'll open up your eyes to all the complexities that come with software development. And so I'm going to help explain that to you. Now bear with me, we're about to jump into a spreadsheet. So when you engage with an agency, you'll probably receive an invoice that looks something like this. Now you can see the dollar amount can get pretty hefty per month and the whole point of this video is to explain why. Now stick around to the end and I will give you some tips on how you could uh, hopefully reduce that bill, that monthly bill, or reduce the overall uh, cost of your project. But Again, let's, let's take a look at this, break it down, and try to understand why that bill is so hefty. Now, uh, whenever we're looking at software development, and again, just looking at an app as an example, uh, generally speaking, people who are creating a mobile application want it for both iOS and Android, which is pretty much the entire planet. So if you look at this, there's an iOS developer and an Android developer, two separate resources because they're developed in two separate languages. Now, um, this is a monthly invoice, and if we look at uh, 20, 80 hours a year divided by 12 months, you get uh, 173.3 hours a month. Now, in terms of the unit price, I have $60 an hour per iOS and Android developer. So how did I come up with this number? Well, let's go over to a site called Upwork. Now, Upwork is a site where people go um, to find developers all around the planet, um, or uh, actually more than developers, there's designers, marketers, and, and just about anything you're looking for. But if I'm looking for a software developer, and let me go ahead and, and search for that. You could see that I have Fred here for $80 an hour, uh, Dylan, $85 an hour, software consultant here uh, for $80, $90, 278 this guy's a CTO, so he's way overkill, um, $70 an hour, 110 But to be fair, if you're paying attention here, this is all U.S. and Canada, and, and uh, it, this isn't what we're looking for. Let's go ahead. and uh, just look at international. Okay, so Russia here, $60 an hour. Uh, United Kingdom, $70 an hour. Australia, $80 an hour. Russia, $70 an hour. Let's go to like page four. Just uh, skip through all the, the high level guys. All right, Venezuela, $60 an hour. United Kingdom, 65. Russia, $60 an hour. Let's see here, Poland, $60 an hour, just so you could see the variety of people that we're looking for here. Another 60, so you could see where I came up with $60 an hour is actually towards the um, bottom of the barrel here, but let's stick with that for now, $60 an hour. So 60 times 173 uh, hours is about $10,400. Um, every month. Same thing for the Android developer. Now we have a web developer here. Now the first question that, that may come up is, um, you know, why do I need a web developer? I'm, I'm creating a mobile application. Now in some uh, cases, they're rare, but in some cases you don't need a web developer, but in the vast majority you do. Why is that? So if you're developing an app that has a username and password uh, and there's a user profile, where did, where did you authenticate that user from? that username and password needs to be checked against a database that's somewhere in the cloud that a web developer created to make sure that that's a valid username and password. When that user logs in and sees specific information for them, where did that information come from? Well, that information is saved somewhere in the cloud. And so there's this backend system that is created and generally web developers are the ones that, that do that. So um, I, I have a web developer here and we'll, we'll give more examples as we move along um, on why you need a web developer as well. Um, QA, so this is the quality assurance resource and this is the person that's going to check everybody else's work and make sure that they're doing a good job and there's no uh, bugs being introduced. 
Uh, a designer, there's two types of designers. Uh, uh, some people that work ahead of the developers that design everything out and then uh, and give, give the design to the developers and they implement. And some designers can actually implement themselves and they can either create the design or inherit a design from somebody else and actually make the, the UI of your application beautiful. Um, so that's important as well. And then we have the project manager. The project manager is the person who makes sure everybody's showing up on time, everybody's doing their job, nobody's slacking off, and making sure that you hit your deadlines. Now, if you look at here, uh, to be fair, developers, I, I just put the bottom of the barrel, $60 an hour. Um, and then QA, I said, will always make a generally about 75% of what a developer makes. A designer, about 90% of what a developer makes and 80% uh, of what a developer makes is what a project manager makes. Now again, this is not exact, but it's, it's good enough uh, uh, ballpark numbers so that um, you get an idea of how this number grows. The other variable you have is how many months does it take for me to actually develop any software that I'm looking at. So um, just for the sake of an example, uh, I went to Lean Plum. Uh, they have a blog. You should check them out. They're a really good um, system. Uh, they have a blog that has an example of a user flow. I just opened this this up right here, and it's super simple. I think everybody developing an app can, well, regardless of what your app is doing, can relate to this. Now, this user flow says, okay, well, I want my uh, user to go ahead and log in. If they, if they don't have a login, they'll sign up. Um, once they do that, they show up on their home page. The, uh, they have a side menu that gives them some um, links to other parts of the app and maybe uh, some personal information about them. And uh, a settings page, a dashboard, uh, this, think, think of this uh, of a hub of all the information uh, about the app. And feature one, let's say this app has a news feed, and feature two, a calendar, uh, a reminder, messages. So consider this feature one, two, and three. Uh, and then there's that profile for that particular um, user. Now again, your features may be different, but this is extremely simple um, in terms of uh, um, what a user flow would look like, and I think everybody can relate to it. Now, uh, while this is uh, definitely not fully comprehens uh, comprehensive to accomplish your task, let's just simplify it to say there's five by two, there's 10 screens that uh, we want to develop on our app. So what I did here, and I'll share this uh, sheet with everybody so that you can go through this exercise yourself. Um, I ask, how many uh, custom screens do you have on your um, application? So in this particular example, there's five by two, that's 10 screens. So I'm just gonna come in here and type in 10. Now, in terms of dev weeks, I figure a, a screen uh, will take, for every one screen, it'll take one developer week. Now, some will take more, some will take less. Um, this is just an average. So let's just call it a one-to-one -one ratio here. So for every one screen, it'll take one developer week. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, I always explain how uh, design and QA should always be 20 to 25% um, uh, uh, ratio in terms of development hours. So you could see I take C2, multiply it by uh, 0.25 to get 25% of 10 hours, which is 2.5 hours. Same thing for QA. And if we sum those up, that gives us a total of 15. So total here, 15, that's what we see here. Now, how many uh, backend admin screens do you need? Now, this is the backend administration of your app. So let's say you have a user who forgot their password and you need to reset it for them. Let's say uh, there's a product on your e-commerce app that you want to deprecate. Let's say there's a user you want blocked. Uh, so whatever dynamic content that you need to create for, for your backend, uh, backend system, you'll have a web portal, a portal that allows you to manipulate all this information. Now, in this example, uh, let's skip all of this and just call it feature one, two, three. You can argue that there's a lot more uh, entities, but let's just call them three features and three features to manipulate. So going back here, there's three features here. And again, accordingly, you'll see the price jump. How many custom uh, reports would you like? So again, just these are just the reports that you wanna see uh, based on user behavior, revenue of your app, user engagement, and so on. Let's just call it uh, two simple reports. I don't want anything more than that. Now you can see uh, it's gonna take less time to develop a, a report. Some reports can get pretty hefty, but in this example, I'm saying it's, it'll take us less time. It'll take us 75% uh, of a week, which means just a few days. 
Um, integration, so let's say I'm integrating with uh, Google Maps, um, some mail server, any third party integrations, payment systems, analytic uh, systems, things like that. Um, how many custom integrations? Let's just call it one. And I'm just gonna give them a, a quarter of a week, which is just a, a couple of days uh, to knock that out and everything accordingly. Now, I have a margin of error of 5%, so that within 5%, uh, uh, I should be correct. So I'm going to pad it the worst case scenario by 5%. And you can see that the total amount of weeks is 23.2. That's with, with the uh, 5%. The price per week is $12,000. Uh, and how did we get that? We got that from the invoice multiplied by 12. So 12 months divided by 52 weeks. So the invoice price multiply that by 12 and then um, divide it by 52 weeks, and that's how we, uh, we got the $12,000. And now if we multiply this uh, uh, price per week by the number of weeks that we have, this is how we come up with $280,000. Now you can see it adds up pretty quickly. Now, uh, I know many of you are probably going to say, well, I found somebody uh, you know, in India that's willing to do this for $40 an hour. So let me go ahead and change it to $40 an hour here. And you can see everything reflects automatically. And you'll see, okay, so now we're down to $34,000, $35,000 a month. You're still looking at a hefty price, even though this dropped down to $8,000. Even if you found somebody willing to go down to $20 an hour, okay? At $20 an hour, you're really scraping the bottom of the bottom here. Uh, but let's call it $20 an hour you're still looking at $100,000 uh, to finish your project here. Now, I promised you guys a tip on how you can uh, develop your application and your software with a uh, potential less cost here. Now, again, there's, there's two variables. There's the price per hour, and you can try to shrink that down, but you know the quality of what, what you're getting is dropping. And the problem with a lot of these, these agencies is you know, once you're neck deep in and you still don't have your product, what are you going to do? You're either out your money or you have to sink in more and more and more and more. So there's the initial price tag that they anchor you at. And then by the time you're done, you've spent double, triple, quadruple that amount. And you're still not happy with your application. Now, another thing is if you uh, partner up with a system that has most of what you need pre-built. So if you're looking for a mail server, don't create a mail server, integrate with that mail server. But there's a lot of that that happens in the mobile app development world. So for example, uh, company BuildFire uh, has your login already created, a sign up already created, homepage, side menu, settings already created, a profile that's already created, uh, an in-app messaging already created, a calendar that's created, news are already created. So really, you shaved it to one or two screens. Now, if you were to pay a premium, on developers to say I give me somebody who actually knows what they're doing is gonna give me a beautiful app but I'd rather put my resources in getting something done well as opposed to reinventing the entire wheel um, you can put uh, your overall cost even though per hour may even go up but your overall cost will go down because you're just you're just focusing on bridging the gap for your your particular app um, and you could do that incrementally because there's an existing system that's already there. Um, now, this, this goes without saying you have a, a back-end system that deals with analytics and push notifications and user authentication and, and uh, CMS. And there's a, a massive amount of infrastructure that's done in the back-end that you can just inherit. I hope this helps you better understand uh, why software development costs uh, what it does, better appreciate everything that, that goes uh, in, in the back-end and what it takes to develop software and uh, informs you with your next endeavor. And uh, if you need help, feel free to reach out to us. Good luck with your next project. I hope you enjoyed that video. If there's a topic you'd like me to talk about, feel free to contact me on any one of these links below. If you'd like me to help on one of your projects, feel free to contact me as well.